uh, I would like you guys to uh, meet Dr. Le Bouch. So Dr. Le Bouch is in charge of open innovation at EDF. EDF. So you know maybe that um, EDF is uh, one of the um, most powerful technological leader in nuclear plants in the world. It's one of our French a great and big company. They are building a lot of nuclear plants all around the world, specifically in France. So he's going to talk about uh, technology, innovation, creativity, and there will be a link between, you understood, research and real companies uh, like robots. You know that tomorrow we meet uh, Hanson Robotics. So he has built um, his presentation and his lectures today uh, about it. And uh, I would like you guys to welcome Dr. Le Bouch, Professor Le Bouch, that you will see in China. Professor Le Bouch, just for your information, we have people today from Dubai, from Qatar, from England, from Cameroon, and from China, and obviously from France. So, hello, Dr. Le Bouch, we can applaud him. Hello, uh, do you listen to me? It's okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Perfect. Um, okay, perfect. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, because according to the place where you don't have exactly the same, uh, the same time. Um, so, I'm going to, um, to present you uh, something about uh, creativity. And uh, the, um, we're going to start with sort of uh, introduction about uh, robotics. And uh, so certainly I think that uh, you have tomorrow a presentation by Ensign Robotics with uh, Sophia, which is a humanoid uh, robot. And uh, we're going to see that um, why it's important or not, it can be not so important to make robot or not, we're going to try to understand really in the deep why it works or not in the daily life, because uh, presently the big challenge is with uh, B2C, business to customer, because generally in most of the countries, uh, business to customer, B2C is 70% uh, of uh, business. So it's very, very important to say, okay, in the industry, robots are now um, a reality, but in the daily life for the end user, it is not at all. So we're going to just to think about it and try to, to, to have some different trend in what I'm going to present you now. So, ah, alors, je peux pas passer mes slides. Alors, um, yeah. Um, when I work in innovation, we, we have realized that there are three different topics which are very, very important where we think that we're going to have a radical innovation, we can have a really a rupture. It's in robotic, in agriculture, and in energy. About uh, robotic, uh, presently, we know that uh, about industry, you have many, many robots, in particular about uh, car. Also in, uh, in finance, where now you have 70% of uh, financial in uh, with uh, traders, especially in America, which are just with robot, and half percent, fifty percent uh, in Europe are also with uh, with a robot, and robots are very very uh, performant because uh, it is high frequency trading, and they can go very very fast, much more fast than human. So in industry where you have process and you just have. To, to speed up the process and not to, to make any mistake, no creativity at all. Robot is very good in a good performance and the same in finance. When you want to go to the, to the end user, you realize that the, the most important is about toy and about the army. And what is interesting is that in this both field, army and toy, is exactly, they use exactly the same technology. And this, te this technology is also with just a robot who just uh, make a copy of behavior, but is not uh, being able to get any uh, self-consciousness. So we speak a lot, uh, and uh, I think that Marcel knows this subject a lot, 
about intelligence artificial, artificial intelligence, but in reality for the moment, especially about the army and toy, uh, robots have no self-consciousness. They just can show that they have the same behavior as human, they can follow process, but nothing anymore. So when you, you try to, to see the, the, the last uh, tendency where, where people try to make something with robots in the daily life, you have, for instance, this uh, little robot in, uh, it's a little bit old, eight years ago, but nothing changed. So uh, it's really a proof that uh, about robotic in the daily life, it's not easy to, to find a good way to, to get the market. Uh, for instance, Microsoft, and Microsoft is very, very good in, in, uh, in data, in informatics, but about robots, they present French uh, Robosoft because they don't have really uh, specific robots. So you see, even with Microsoft, it's not easy. But in the daily life, in reality, we have already a robot, but we don't realize it. A coffee maker is a robot, or a briefing machine is also a robot. So we have that kind of robot, but we, but we don't think that they are robots. And here is the problem. Because we need to understand that a robot can just exist in our daily life, uh, and then to make uh, a part for his uh, presence in our daily life. And presently, nobody can know that. Nobody know how to make this. It's very, very difficult to get uh, uh, social uh, acceptability about robot except in one way it is about the social bot about the social bot when you go to uh, media social media you can see that you have different robots and in reality you don't know that they are robot uh, that can make some discussion especially about uh, um, uh, meeting uh, website uh, to meet uh, men and women where uh, many, many people think they can find a very beautiful woman or a very handsome guy. And ART it is just a robot, just an algorithm. So, but there, there it is really a success because the beginning of the discussion is always the same thing. It's only a process. The first is, uh, hello, how are you? Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, old are you? Are you a singer or not? Uh, it's always the same, the same question. So uh, about social media, robots are really a success but it is the only one. And it's also very important because in this uh, social uh, sphere, there is no, no, no body. And the problem of the robot is also the problem of the link with the environment, with the body. Here we have many, many difficulties. With uh, social bot, no problem, no body. Uh, and so you can see that on, uh, on this, uh, this slide, that bot traffic uh, completely explodes. Um, three years ago, it was more than half of the website uh, traffic, which is with robots. Human are uh, more and more, uh, are no more uh, important, are less and less important. And uh, the problem is that uh, many of these robots can be very aggressive, like uh, spam or hacking, things like that. It's not always very, very positive. But now you have to, to, to be really uh, aware that it is more than half of the internet traffic, which is with robots all over the world. Um, about robots, we try also to, to get some, um, uh, some experimentation with uh, paper in Japan. We will see that Japan is very, very good about robots and we've got the, always the, the same question about the uh, social acceptability. Uh, Japanese people uh, do accept easily robot, which is not the case in, uh, in France or things like that. And um, with paper, uh, you have uh, Nestlé who try to, to go into the shop and putting a specific uh, robot, 1000 robot, um, and uh, they take the place of human. And they say, okay, it's not a problem. We can sell product to everybody, to the end user, with just robot. We don't need any human to assist this. And uh, presently, after uh, four, five years, we realized that it doesn't really work. Because always the same thing, the problem of the body, the problem of uh, the relationship between human and the robot can just make like a monkey, can uh, show that he can make the same behavior, but in reality, it doesn't have the good feeling 
and uh, other people can feel that human can feel that it's not human and they want in reality human even if uh, they don't tell it but uh, at the same moment in uh, 2050 we have also a study about uh, Roland Berger which is a huge uh, consultancy uh, office which said okay in uh, 2025 uh, 42 uh, percent of the jobs uh, could disappear because the robots are going to do it. They can, they can make the job of uh, communication, of uh, some job in marketing, uh, job in journalism. About journalism, it is a reality. Presently, you have many, many robots who just write by themselves articles with uh, just uh, basic words. It's very, very easy to put robots in uh, journalism. But about marketing and communication, we are not sure that it is possible. But people think that about the, the, the idea of process, there are many, many process in marketing and in communication, maybe robot can be better than human. So this study was uh, really a big uh, shock at that time, a big warning say, uh, telling to human, uh, be careful, robots are going to take your place in, the, in your job, in the society. But in reality, Presently, with after uh, five years, that now we we realize that it's not really sure that it, it does uh, it, it will work. But we can see we, the um, the creation of new jobs, new jobs where robot will be essential, but new jobs for human, but where uh, human will work with robots more and more and not with other human. For instance, data detective. We realize now that uh, more and more people need to follow the, the, the data, their personal data. And they need uh, a person who can just check the data and consolidate the data and tell them, OK, at this moment, somebody, or it can be a robot, is uh, using your data uh, to make with algorithm, algorithm something with your data. And uh, this will be a job for human but this human will use a lot of robots. Uh, it's the same about uh, the job of uh, buying in big company, where you need to more and more to be sure that the ethic and morality and good value um, are with your buyer, and that you don't have any problem with your buyer, that uh, they are completely in accord with uh, your va the value of the company. And here also robots are very important. If you just make the contract and uh, just uh, read everything, ex uh, uh, hoping that you're going to find the good uh, words and that it's okay with your value, it takes a, lo a long time, very, very long time. So a robot can do the job and you need a man to consolidate and to analyze this. So it will be a job for human, but with robot. About uh, Walker and Talker, more and more with all people, we need a person to assist and uh, to help them and also just to speak with them in the daily life. And uh, this job is interesting because it's really a modern job, but at the same time, that, we, that uh, has been exist uh, two centuries ago. And uh, in most of the countries, uh, for rich people, when they get old, they have a company, company people with them in the daily life to, to help them and to speak with them. Um, here also, robots are very important because uh, if the person is old and needs some uh, medicine, some to be assisted, things like that, the, the guy uh, who, has, who is in company man or company woman uh, cannot get all the knowledge. With robot and use of data, it can help him to know what he has to, to talk and at um, what moment it's important that he's close to the customer. Um, technician about uh, health, but uh, with uh, intelligence um, assisted. Uh, the same for um, a sort of manager, but manager of a team where you have a robot, but where you are also human. It's very important to find the good balance between robot and human. It's not easy presently. For instance, me in my team, I have three human and two algorithms. And generally, I have uh, when I have big problem, it is with algorithm, because when I have problem. Hmm? Hello. Yes. 
It's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you can continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, with um, so manager with between uh, men and uh, algorithm. Uh, also, now it's a reality uh, all over the world. When you want to try uh, clothes, uh, you use a specific uh, video that can uh, show you the clothes on your body. This is also with robots, but you need also always a human in the shop, not like uh, Nespresso in Japan uh, or Nestle in Japan. It, it doesn't work. Um, a people who can be sure that uh, the crypto money, uh, like Bitcoin, are safe. This is also uh, very important about trust. All the, all the job with trust, you need human. If you just put robot, in short term, it can work. But in middle term or long term, generally, people uh, cannot trust and cannot follow the brand if you don't have any human. This is also very important. It's a result very, uh, very um, presently. It's, it's, a, it's a new uh, new knowledge that we, we learned one or two years ago. Uh, Sherpa, uh, Sherpa is somebody who is going to help you uh, to, to choose your product and uh, in, uh, in, on the internet. Here's a, it's interesting job because you're no more in the physical world, you are on the internet, but you need a person who's going to assist you just having the result of the alg algorithm of the robot telling you, okay, this product is good for you, but this other one is uh, cheaper or more interesting with more option is not just enough. You need the human contact to be sure that you can have discussion because about the nuances, about what you want to do, the use, specific use that you want with the, with the goods and the product, you need a human to help you. Um, this is also interesting. Uh, people who are going to use the, the data that, you, uh, that you, you put on the internet during all your life. And uh, this person is able to create a sort of memory of uh, virtual memory. And also here, robot and algorithm are present, but you need a human to create the, the, to, to, uh, the, the story. Because if you don't have human, you can have the fact that you don't have the story. And also here, human is very, very, very important. And the last one is about uh, the fact that certainly we're going to see that with drone and uh, over uh, plane and automatic plane, uh, it, it starts, it's going to go uh, in uh, sooner. Normally in Japan, uh, in uh, 2025, uh, you, you can see that. You have more and more drone in the, in, in the heaven. And so you need people to control, uh, to control uh, this specific space. And here also you can have uh, algorithm, you can have a robot who, uh, who can uh, plane and uh, show everything, but you need a human to manage the priority. So you see, you have here 10 different jobs where a robot in the algorithm is very essential, but a human is also, also, also very essential. So the idea to say, okay, in the daily life, a robot is going to take the job of human is certainly not a reality. New jobs are creating, all jobs are moving and uh, shifting. So certainly robots are not the enemy of, the, of uh, humanity. And the proof is that you have also a robot to make a kiss. This is uh, interesting. Uh, Kissinger is a little robot. When you kiss the Kissinger, you can have your girlfriend or boyfriend at the other side of the world. And when he puts on the lips, he, he, he or she uh, feel exactly the pressure and the humidity of your kiss. It's uh, very, very precise. And it's funny. I'm not sure that it's going to, to work. It's funny because in reality, it's uh, Jewish people who create this robot. And they have a problem with uh, Muslim people because the robot is like a pig. And no uh, Muslim people want to kiss a pig. So it's a uh, strength, but it's also in robot. It's interesting. The other one here is not at all funny. It's a real market in France. It's a seal uh, robot. And as you can see on the picture, this uh, little uh, animal, it's uh, like a toy. 
and in reality, as uh, the, the heavy is like a baby, and uh, it can move uh, very slow, uh, like uh, um, something which is uh, alive. You have the feeling that uh, the, the, the robot is alive. And for very old people who got uh, Alzheimer's disease or things like that, it creates some illusion, it creates artificial uh, body and artificial sensation, but it helps them a lot. They appreciate a lot in the daily life. And in France, uh, this seal robot, they sell more than 10,000. 10,000 in just two years. In just two years, 10,000 robots have been sold. And it's, uh, it's quite, uh, quite expensive because it is uh, 4,000 for one robot. And uh, they, they sell a lot uh, about all people. So you see, robot is also very important about the um, uh, affection. It is not just to make process to be in a rational world. You can also have robot who can help you to, to, to feel happy in your daily life. This is also very important because sometimes we forget that robot is not just useful. It can be also very important for your happiness. Here you can see on this uh, slide that um, you have uh, the number the, the, the best countries about a robot. It is most of the time it's about industry, of course, it's not in the daily life. Uh, but what is very, very interesting is that uh, Japan is, uh, as you can see here, the first one, but really, really the first. The second one, Singapore, is really small in comparison with uh, Japan. And uh, the, um, the quality of relationship between uh, people, especially between men and women, but also between people and foreigners, is very important to uh, to make this uh, social access ac uh, acceptability um, and uh, japan has a specificity in their culture where they not uh, completely in accord <laughs> with, <laughs> with foreigners that's why they prefer robot <laughs> to foreigners in france for instance we prefer foreigners to robot and so you use a lot of immigration this is also very, very important because in reality, to have success in robot in daily life, all the question is politic. If your country and your culture like foreigners and have no problem with immigration, and it's the case of many, many, many countries, also of the US, even if uh, Donald Trump say no, uh, it's not easy to develop robot in the daily life. When the, the, the country uh, has a really, really specific uh, culture and doesn't want to, to mix with other culture, then uh, it's difficult to, uh, to develop robots. Okay? It's not just a question of money, it's not just a question of being expensive, it's not a question of uh, technological knowledge, it's really a problem of politics and culture. Um, here is just to, to, to show you, I don't know that uh, if you're interested okay. about robots, yes? No, it's Marcel who's speaking. Just something which is funny because you talked, uh, you're talking about uh, politics and robots. Um, always these figures, because you mentioned Singapore, uh, but Singapore of course has less robots than Germany. We're talking about ratios, right? Yeah, perfect. And uh, it's for, uh, it's for uh, manufacturing workers, but in totality, yeah. it's Japan and Germany, of course. And I'm always, uh, you know, we, we had this conversation before. The two countries which have the biggest number of robots are the countries where the unemployment work, um, rate is the lowest. So the more you have uh, employed people, the more you have robots in the country. It's really interesting. Yes. For all the people who have some fears with artificial intelligence and robots. <laughs> Political uh, issue. Exactly. 
Um, here, I, I just want to, to present you this, this uh, slide because uh, there is this, um, I don't know if you know that, it's very interesting if you are interested in robots. It's a World Robotic uh, Service Robot. It's a sort of uh, every year um, uh, art, uh, state of the art would say, okay, robot in the world is like this, like this, like this. It's a big, very good report and you can have uh, uh, many um, numbers, statistics, and it's very, very interesting just to, to show you. So the conclusion about robot is that the most important is not technology. The most important is creativity. Like uh, you have seen with uh, Kissinger or about the seal robot, you need to be very creative to make uh, the fact that in the daily life, people do uh, agree and accept and find a part of their life with robot. So even if uh, you are in a, in a DBA, in a doctoral pro program, and that you want to be uh, very rigorous in the way you are thinking, in the, that you are uh, making some uh, research with a scientific way, you need in reality this creativity. Without this creativity, you will not have any success. Maybe you're going to publish in uh, some, art, uh, some article in a specific uh, journal, science journal, things like that. But beyond this, we'll not, you will not get any success in the daily life with everybody. And this is very important. When uh, you, you can see that uh, uh, Einstein, Einstein was a genius and uh, was the good figure but it was 100 years ago. Now, Einstein is completely dead. It's not sure that in 2020, Einstein will get success because he was not crazy enough and not creative enough. So he was very strict, very rigorous, and his theory are fantastic, but only a few uh, hundred of people in the world can understand Einstein. And so, what uh, it's just to give you some advice. Um, don't try to be a genius. Try to be uh, understanding by everybody. The real intelligence is not the, the thing which is uh, very accurate, very precise, uh, that only uh, a few people can understand. The true intelligence is that you can adapt and understand the need of everybody in the world. Okay? So Einstein is completely dead, be sure about this. And here I'm going to present you, I don't know if you can see that, a little video of a young uh, French scientist. I'm sorry, I'm French, so many of my examples are French, but generally the same in the rest of the world. It's not, uh, there's not difference with the rest of the world. So here I'm going to, to go to a video I will try, I hope that it's going to work. And you will see all they, they present. Oh. Um. Oh, I'm going to go to video. Just one moment, please. the video. Euh, ben, alors, attends, partager, partager. Oui, c'est la partie, c'est ça, c'est ça. Ah oui, donc c'est bon, donc si je le lance la vidéo, là, il la voit Non, vous avez partagé que le... Alors, comment on fait Vas-y, je te ça. Just one minute, please. Sure. Ouais. Ok. Vous pouvez partager votre écran. Ben, partage l'écran, partage l'écran. Parce qu'il n'y a pas ici. Partagez l'écran. Partagez. C'est OK. So, uh, it's in French, but you will see, I'm not, it's not very long. 
I just want to, in a way, explain after why I, I show you this uh, this little movie. They, they present themselves, just they present themselves, and they are in the street. And here you can see that they show you a sort of poster, and uh, uh, they're going to show you a, a movie. So, technically, it doesn't work. I think that you have problem with the network, so I stop here the video. It's not a problem. Um, what I want to, I'm going to explain to you this video. In this video, in reality, you have two young scientists, and they are no more uh, trained to explain to you, but they are writing in article in uh, Nature, Science, Elsevier, uh, different uh, to publish article in, in science. They are into the street, and they speak about a very difficult subject, which is about physics, but they are into the street to present their results. And they make some uh, specific uh, image, they make a video, it's very aesthetic, it's no more technique, and uh, they explain you just the aesthetic of their research. And just by the aesthetic of their research, they can find money. So you, you, you see, it's very, very important. If you want to, to get people who follow you, you don't try just to be uh, very precise and very accurate about your research and your results. Try to make some marketing about what you're going to show to the rest of the world. And also now it's in science, it's becoming the rule. And uh, it's exactly what people want in their daily life. Here I present you a poll when we ask to French people uh, about uh, their daily life and the big uh, challenge in the world, uh, what people want to explain them and to find solution to, uh, to succeed in these challenges. And in reality, the answer is very important, is the most important people in the world are scientists. We need scientists to explain us the solution to help us to change our behavior in the daily life. To, to go to uh, sustainable uh, development, things like that. But they need uh, to get now a di direct relationship with scientists. They don't want anymore um, a sort of uh, uh, middleman who's going to translate the scientist's words and the scientist's article. They want a di direct link. And this is quite new. 10 years ago, it will not does exist. And now it's completely a reality. And they want in the daily life that the scientists, beyond the fact that they have a big uh, expert and uh, have a specific knowledge, are able to understand and to speak with everybody. This is very, very, very important for you. If you make a DBA, be sure that at the end you can speak with everybody. This is very, very, very important. And now you can see that, and it's, a, it's the same for uh, in all over the world, a specific uh, internet website. In France, uh, we have uh, Vivagora, Futura Science, or Science and Democracy, where uh, you, you present, you are a scientist, and you can present your results, and also the vision of the world, the vision of the future that you, you can have. So what you are is more important than science. This is also um, a new way of thinking. It's uh, all over the world. It's more and more important to, to be um, able to be pedagogue, to understand and to explain to everybody your knowledge. In France, we have uh, new magazines in the daily life. And you have also in Asia and uh, in the US, the New York Times creates uh, Science Times. Uh, and uh, uh, this magazine presents you the science in the daily life. What is very interesting is that in reality, the price of that kind of magazine with scientists is the double of the normal price for a magazine. Uh, people who read that kind of magazines 
read uh, too, too, uh, too much times than uh, the middle. So it's a very good uh, reader. And uh, generally, they read many, many, many magazines, ju not just one. So this is very important because it can show you that more and more people want to get some information about science, but translate in the daily world. It's the same about uh, specific website like uh, Thinkovery, uh, who explain to you um, different questions that uh, a scientific, that uh, people who make big study can have and how it can share with everybody. This is also very important. It's uh, this website is uh, the way to meet scientists directly by the internet. In France, we have also a big organization about science. The name is uh, CNRS. It's the state organization. And uh, for uh, five years, CNRS changed completely uh, is a strategy of uh, publish. They uh, try more and more to speak about the daily life project to explain why they uh, support science. Here also, there is a big revolution and uh, it shows you that science is very, very important for everybody with a very sim simple subject. Uh, in France, we have also, but it's the same as the rest of the world, a specific TV about this with uh, Science TV, and you have uh, 24 hours per day, uh, just a report and presentation of uh, scientists' results on TV. And it is a big success in France and all over the world is like this. So it changed completely the place of scientists in the society. So if you are a scientist and if you are a robot, if you want to speak to everybody, you need to be very simple. What we want with scientists is that it can be more simple than techn technological men. We want that the scientists help us to simplify everything. Uh, this is uh, another uh, newspaper and magazine on the internet, it's the same. And also, when uh, you want to, uh, to meet and when you want uh, to, um, uh, to hire a PhD or a doctoral uh, program, people, uh, now you, you go to a public forum. Uh, Ten years ago, when you want to, uh, to hire a scientist, you need to go to the laboratory. Nothing was public, nothing was uh, in the daily life. Here, it changed completely. When you want to find a PhD or want to find a doctoral uh, people with that kind of knowledge, you need to go to a public uh, place. This is also very new for a doctor. Um, this is also a revolution for um, the business model of the publisher. Uh, I think that you have seen with uh, coronavirus that uh, generally this, uh, that kind of publication is not always, it is scientific, but uh, sometimes it's not always very serious. And now more and more scientific uh, don't want just to pay to publish and the, the reader don't want to pay to read. So it changed also the business model of research and you're going to create more like the young people, I cannot show you the movie, but the movie is really interesting, um, who say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to publish in, uh, in a scientific article. But what is more important for me is to create a video and put it on YouTube because I want that everybody in the world can see my video. So, and I don't want to pay for this. So this also is very, very new. It changed completely the business model about the research publication. And also, it changed the methodology of research. And this is very, very new. Um, I present here uh, the book. Um, it, it's not very famous, but it is very, very interesting of uh, a man who explained that about research, we are now in the fourth paradigm. What is the fourth paradigm? It's very simple. Um, when you want to make some science at the beginning, generally you, you go and see into the world and you just uh, have a look, you look at everything, you try to be very accurate in your observation, 
And because uh, you are very concentrate on the subject, you make good analysis, you can get the knowledge. And after you make some hypothesis, and then you go on uh, by experimentation to be sure that your hypothesis work. And here there is scientific knowledge. But now things are changing. Because you have data and that you have all these articles, scientist article, you can have algorithm, a robot who's going to use it, take the result and mix them with different kind of sciences and find correlation. And with this new correlation, but nobody can uh, imagine, you will find new scientific knowledge. This is the fourth paradigm where big data is essential to, to have a new discovery about science. This is very, 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 very important, very new. And I think that if you want to, to go in research more and more and deeper and deeper, it will be certainly the new rules. You need algorithm to find the combination, to find the, the link between scientific results, which are completely separate in different fields. It's very, very important and it's very new. The problem is that the more that kind that uh, the style of research develops and have some success, uh, the problem is that you have many fake science. Uh, you can see that there is a correlation here between the, the fake article and the development of the internet. So the more and more you have internet and the development of uh, sharing article with everybody, the more scientific results can be fake. And this is also a big, uh, a big problem because you can have, uh, we, we had the, the, um, uh, the big uh, scandal, it was uh, 15 years ago with the guy uh, in Korea, Wang Wu Stung, uh, who say that uh, he has discovered the, the way to, uh, to clone, to, to create a specific animal. And in reality, uh, it didn't work. And the problem, it's very, very difficult to be critic and to say, okay, uh, these results are good or are fake. And uh, we speak a lot about fake news, but be careful because now there is more and more fake science. So uh, be very critic when you find some article on the internet, because be sure that the person are uh, really serious because you can have fake article and sometimes it is not just the fact that some people want to, to get success and want to be uh, famous all over the world and they create a fake result. It can be lobbying who create fake science, fake knowledge, because it's very important for them to, to keep the, pro the power. For instance, about uh, smoke, you have many companies, many big international companies who create fake science to say smoking is not dangerous for human. And it will work during 40 years in the US. Not everywhere in the rest of the world, but in the US, it will work a lot. So be careful with the development of the internet, the, develop, the, the development of fake science and fake knowledge is also, there is a, cor there is a correlation. Okay, so here is the problem. If you want to be creative, or not make fake science. And it's very important to be creative, to be sure that everybody is going to understand your knowledge and the result of your research. But at the same time, in your creativity, uh, you have to be uh, solid in the result. So don't sacrifice the, to be rigorous, don't sacrifice the, the, the quality of your research just because you want to be creative. So, how creativity does it work? It's the, the important question. Um, here I'm going to present you um, the work of um, a, a, a doctor which is very, very interesting. It is uh, 15 uh, years old. It's not very famous, but I think that uh, it was in the Harvard Business School Press. 
it's uh, it's work are very very are essential to my mind. Uh, this uh, this guy makes the difference between a person who want to be efficient and a person who want to be creative. And here you can see on the slide, on the left side, that if you want to be efficient, you need to follow the rule. So you follow the rule and you respect the culture. You are very conservative. You just use what you know. So you're very rigorous. You just answer to the present need of your customer. You don't anticipate. And you program and you plan everything. You want to be very precious and with rigorous and uh, you uh, try to follow the structure, okay? If you want to be creative, you think be, uh, beyond the box. So you don't follow the rule and you don't respect the culture. You want to explore what you don't know. So you don't explode just the knowledge which, which does exist. You want to anticipate the future need of your customer. So you don't just answer the present need of your customer. And the rest is like this. So you leave a new ID, you give liberty, you leave flexibility, and it's very different. So you have, the, the, you have the, the impression that if you want to be creative, you cannot to be efficient. It's like if it was completely the opposite. And in reality, it's not the case. That's why the, the work by uh, v, uh, Vijay uh, Govindarajan are very, very interesting. Because uh, between this, uh, the fact being creative, what we call the code B, code B, and being efficient, the code A, there is certainly a sort of transition between both, which the name is code X. And here you have efficiency, here you have creativity. And when, for instance, you want to create a company, you want to create your startup, at the beginning, you just have one ID, so you are in the creativity. But when you transform this ID in business plan, and after you, care, you create your structure, your startup, and then after you grow up and you have some business and make some profit, then you, you become more and more efficient. So what happens? What happens between the code B and the code A? What is it, code X? Does it exist? And what happens? Did you forget that you was able to be creative? Did you uh, take to other people new knowledge? Did you learn new knowledge to be efficient? We don't know. But in reality, we can ask the question and we can find some answer which is very interesting. It's the bounded rationality. Bounded rationality is essential to understand why we are creative and how does it work, not only in your brain, but also in the collectivity, because creativity is not just the creativity of a genius. We have seen that Einstein is dead. The creativity is collective. It's the work of a team. And this is very, very, very important. Um, here, I, uh, if you want to have uh, more um, precision, if you want to go deeper about uh, bounded rationality, you have all the work of Herbert Simon. Herbert Simon is fantastic. He's uh, one of the founder of uh, management science and uh, he get a uh, Nobel Prize, and, uh, and he was not economist, which is not uh, easy. And uh, he explained this very, very, with a very, very good knowledge. This idea is very simple. When you look at the world, in reality, you never look at the world directly. You always look at the world with paradigm. And this paradigm, it's not only the fact that your eyes, your, uh, your ears um, are limited, are bounded, but also your mind is limited. So you cannot understand everything. You cannot be aware of the world world. So you need a paradigm to understand 
and to get knowledge. You, do, you cannot get a total and complete knowledge. It's impossible for human. Um, here I have a movie, but I cannot show you because uh, it will work with the network and it's a shame because it's interesting. Because it shows you how oh, it, it does work in your, uh, in your brain. But here I, I cannot do because uh, at, uh, I need to be in front of you to present you the movie. If, uh, if I uh, normally I will go and see you and then I, I will present you the movie. But the idea is very simple. Due to the fact that your knowledge is never perfect, you can have a, a exhaustive and complete knowledge. It's very important to be sure that other people share the way you are looking at the world. That's why when you have these two people, one say, okay, this is six, and the other one is, no, it is nine. And then can have in a conflict, but in reality, this man just need to be close to the other one. They will share the same vision and both together will do agree that it is six. But it's not important that it is six or nine. It's important that they look at the world together and that they share the same paradigm. This is very, very, very important also in your work. If you want to make some new discover, scientist di discovery, be careful that you, your discovery is not just the fact that you don't have the same paradigm as, you over, as other people. Because sometimes you believe that you are creative, but in reality, it is just that you don't take the good paradigm. And this is very, very, very important. Be original, be creative, but always with the same paradigm than other people, or nobody will understand you. This is very, very, very important if you want to be efficient. And here we, we find back the, this, uh, this work, because if you want to be efficient and creativity, you need to use the same paradigm. Here is the solution, and here is the answer to this question. The answer to the bounded rationality is use the same paradigm. Okay? So the question is, okay, but if you want to be creative, you have uh, the, the right to, to be free in your mind. You don't, because if uh, too early in the morning you say, okay, I want to be in the good way, I want to, speak, to think uh, like uh, everybody and things like that, we, you will have no idea. So it's not, uh, it's important to have uh, some nuances, some uh, subtitles, and to understand that uh, you have to be free, you have uh, to be uh, inspired, to have new idea, but you have also to be aware of the paradigm, of the present paradigm, and the paradigm uh, change. It's uh, not something which is uh, fixed. It can change many, many times. So uh, take time to get new idea, but take time also to follow the paradigm. And so when you have bounded rationality, the problem is that the object of your research are something like this. So when you are in front of that kind of shape, you don't know if that animal is a duck or is a rabbit. And the problem is that you have only one reality. So you can have different way to look at the shape, but only one reality and only one action on this reality. So what you can do is very simple. If you are in charge uh, to work on this reality, you're going to study a lot. You have your belief, you have your objective. It's very important, a paradigm is never neutral. When you have a paradigm, it's because you want to get a result. You have some objective. It's, it's never naive, ne never. So you're in charge of this subject, you have your own paradigm. And so you're going to be in front of other people who are experts, who are very, very good in the, in the field. And everyone gets his own paradigm. So you're going to present your work, you're going to present your research. And in a very short time, normally, if you are a good 
presentation and if you are good in the way you explain your research. That's why I told you uh, from the beginning of my course, it's very important uh, to, to, to explain to other people and be very simple in the result what you explain uh, of you, you new, uh, uh, new, new knowledge. And normally with the discussion will appear a new paradigm. And in this new paradigm, you say, okay, it's not a dog, it's a rabbit. And then you can have decision making. Then you will improve decision making because everybody will do agree with what is it, this shape. This shape is a rabbit. So we can make decision, we can act. And then the result will be this. And so you see, the result is completely different from the rabbit that you can imagine and very different of the shape when you were working on it in the past. And this is very interesting because in reality, you realize that between what you have in your mind when you are alone, what you are in the mind of other people when they are in a collective way, and what the result after making decision, the result is always completely different and it's normal. So, be agree and be comfortable with the fact that you will never get what you want. The result will be always different and this is a part of creativity. So create a new paradigm, share with maximum of person, very different person, share, share, share. And with this new, new paradigm, you will have a creativity with a new reality. This is very, very important if you want to be a good doctor, to share with everybody, with different kinds of people, not always the same people, because here is the, the success to, to have a creativity and new ID. So the, the only important quality when you work about this is, oh, I'm going to convince other people. I'm going to show them that not only my paradigm is good, but also that my vision of the world and my objectives are interesting for everybody. And if you work in marketing, if you work in communication, if you work with customer or with a, a director in finance, in uh, human resources, it's always the same. You need to convince other people. And here you need to convince to, for the consumption. Here you need to convince for the good message. Here to, to get adhesion of everybody. And so it's always the same objective. You need to convince, you need that other people say, okay, this guy is right. But not because you are more intelligent than other people, just because they share, they share this new knowledge with this new paradigm. This is very, very important. This, no, I passed. This is too, too complex. I'm not going to explain you how is the brain, how the brain works. Now it's difficult by distance. It's not, uh, it's too difficult. Okay. But here we, we have a little experience. Um, can you see the dancer? On your uh, on your screen, it's okay. Do you see? Yeah. Yes. Um, do you see that uh, she's moving on the left side or on the right side? Yeah. It switches. Left or right? Right. right. People who are in the same room. Do you agree between each other? Do you agree be between you? No. Registry in, in uh, China. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Do you see all on the right or on the left? Right for me. Someone said the right, someone said the left. <laughs> Does it change at the moment when you look at the, the, the dancer? Does it change or not? 
Because I explained to you, it's also it's difficult here to present this by distance. But this is um, some exercise for a neuro in a neuro researcher. And generally, when you look at that uh, dancer, uh, some of you in a group can uh, see that uh, she's uh, she makes a circle by the right, but over over thinks that they make a circle by the left. Because according to the, the way you use in your brain some specific knowledge, you will never see the same thing. Here it's difficult to explain the exercise by distance, but some people will use more rationality and more very uh, rigorous, generally have the feeling that she turned by the left, by the left side. And uh, if uh, you are more creative, if you think about the dancer is uh, in opera or things like that, you will have the feeling that she's turning, she makes circle on the right side. And it's interesting because uh, when you have some discussion in the group, when we are in the same place, you will see that the cycle will change. That's, that's why I asked you the, the question. And uh, in reality, when uh, you have that kind of experience, you realize that the creativity into your brain is a result of the discussion between this rational brain and this creative brain. And you have both in your, uh, in your head. This is very, very important. And creativity is a result of this inside discussion. So, when uh, you have um, a, a, a subject that you want to, to where you want to, to, to make some research about the subject, you have a different possibility. Either you're going to use the rationality, you're going to write hypothesis, being very accurate, very precise about your hypothesis. Either, either you say, okay, I know the subject because I have my culture, I have some experience in the past, I have education, and then you use your belief, and it's different from the, the rationality. But what is important is that you create a new paradigm, as we, can, we have seen already on the, on the former slide. And then in this new proposition, in this new way to look at the world, you need to create a new design. This is also very important. The form, the presentation, the style, when you're going to use, is very important to convince other people. You can just by aesthetic uh, make that other people say, okay, it's right. Just because it is beautiful, just because it is elegant, not because it is true or fake. So emotion is essential if you want to convince. And even if you are a scientist, don't use just this and don't say that belief is bad because you are a scientist and you just want to be in rationality and be strict in the way of thinking. Be open-minded and be open-minded and think how it is possible to convince other people. So now we're going to try to present what is creativity. And uh, here it's very important to, uh, to understand this definition and to see that in reality, uh, we have different kind of definition. Uh, the first definition that I, go, I give you is the definition of uh, Osborne. Osborne is a guy who creates a publicity company, advisory company uh, in the second part of uh, the 20th century. And he said, creativity is the ability that you have to create new ID, thanks to imagination. Creativity is the ability to create new ID, thanks to imagination. And uh, the problem is that uh, when you develop this definition, 
you really you realize that uh, the creativity is not just for one person but for a group of people you can have a creativity with collective with a team and then you're going to produce in a very short time it's uh, you don't have all the life to be creative you just have one hour or two hours in a very short time you have to get a maximum of ideas maximum of concept ideas and just in one hour and when you get a big number of ideas then you have to use the efficiency and then you have to say okay these ideas are nice these ideas are original these ideas are new these ideas are very modern uh, i like them i hate them okay different consideration but what is more important is about my problem this idea is good because it is a solution and here is efficiency because id becomes a solution <coughs> excuse me so id is always in a con in a context the value of id is different according to the context this is very very important so when you are creative but you propose different kind of id a big number a, a big a big one many 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 ideas what is important is how fast are you to propose id are you fast the number of ideas can you produce a big number of ideas and this id are they accurate to the problem can they solve the problem and is it original the fourth criteria the fourth the the speed the quantity efficiency and originality are essential to measure the quality of ideas and to get this technical does exist and that's what we're going to look at now the kind of creativity technique that can help you to have very good ideas in a very good context and what is very important is that the kind of id what we're going to produce now our id we can be useful for science for industry for service for company it's for business it's ready for business because having id ideas is a pleasure in life so so sometimes you can have many people who say oh you know i'm very creative i love that i i'm always drawing writing things like that i'm very creative people who are creative do that because not only they, they have the ability of course but also because they have big pleasure it's really a pleasure and here it's not what we're going to interest we want to get some efficiency we want to get some idea to find solution for the company or for science so we're not going to get ideas to make art we don't want to make art we don't want to make some new discovery we don't want to invent we don't want to create a new discovery we don't want to get some idea by chance it's not a question of chance it's not hazard it's not moral hazard and we don't want to be einstein we don't want to be a genius this kind of idea does not interest us we don't want to be in art in discovery in serendipity or in genius we want to be in industry or in science we want to get some id for science and industry okay so about serendipity i don't know if you know serendipity is when you make some new discover and that you get new knowledge but just by chance it's just because you are lucky we are different kind of uh, discovery like this for instance uh, about chirurgy uh, some uh, specific materials like uh, nylon i'm sorry i don't know how it is in english um, uh, penicillin very important to cure people and uh, some different material like uh, aspartam uh, velcro uh, which are also uh, with uh, just uh, by chance just people get lucky and find this discovery this is serendipity and we don't want that that kind of 
of uh, knowledge about creativity. It does exist, we can use it, but if you get it, it's just by chance because you are lucky. But we cannot to be performant and efficient just because we get lucky. So we're not going to use this. Um, if you do agree, uh, before to go on, it's uh, four o'clock and uh, I speak for a very long time. So maybe we're going to make a break? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, if you want, after the break, uh, 10 minutes, if you want something like that. Uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate because I speak a lot. But if you have any question, don't hesitate to, to, to ask me for the question and uh, I will try to give you some answer. Thank you. Just one, again, just one thing, El. in 30 minutes, we have the signature of the chair of research between the Dean and the CEO of Christophe. Oh, perfect. So uh, we make a break. Okay. Okay. Let's take a cup of coffee. How long? Five minutes? Um, do you want five or ten minutes? Well, if there is like something coming up, maybe five minutes. Okay. Thank you.
So it, it's okay? Yep. We we go back. Marcel. Okay. So we we were speaking about the the, the creativity, the definition of uh, creativity. Yeah. Definition. So we have seen that we want to to um, to understand how to be creative with a team for science or for industry or a company, a startup, things like that. And we have seen that uh, serendipity is not what we are looking for. And what is very important is to realize that uh, creativity in reality is uh, unwilling efficiency. Uh, I, 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 um, <laughs> Yes, uh, creativity is um, unwilling efficiency. So you see, uh, by the, the work of the researcher, we say uh, there is a code A and code B, and there is a difference between, between the, the people who are efficient and the people who are creative. Not at all. It is just that we are very precise about the understanding and creativity is unwilling efficiency. The problem is that in, is in the word unwilling. Because most of people, when they uh, look at for uh, experts in science or in a company, uh, they want to be sure that, we, that what they're going to buy. And they say, OK, I, I want to be sure if I have a problem about, uh, I don't know, about uh, water, I want to find some expert that can help me to find the solution about water. So the unwilling is not possible. And um, here is the limit of the creativity and uh, also of the efficiency. If you give uh, too much objective, if you are too rigorous in, that, in the result that you want to get, uh, you will lose a lot of value, really. More and more, and also in the industry, me, I get used in uh, energy. Yeah, and in EDF, I'm uh, with people who are uh, engineers. So the set of mind is very structured and a lot of... Uh, they are very, with a lot of rigor, very precise, uh, but they now understand that it's very important to be open-minded uh, minded, and uh, telling me that, okay, I don't want, uh, I want a solution, but I don't know what kind of solution. I'm open. If the solution is very original, is not at all what I was thinking about, it's not a problem. That's why I explained to you before in the different kind of paradigm that can does exist. And so you can have a creativity in, um, in the development of a specific team. You can have creativity in, in strategy, in business model. You, you can have a creativity in the leadership. You can have uh, also a creativity in the innovation, in, uh, with a manager, with a design, with architecture. Well, the number and the field of creativity is huge. And this is very, very, very important. Just you give a framework, just you say, okay, here is a problem, um, where is the pain, you explain the problem, but after about the solution, you trust. That's why it's very, very, very important that you have a good relationship with people. And here it's no more a question of wounded rationality. It's just a question of what your humanity can explain, can shape, can uh, uh, share with the most of people. This is very, very important. So, when you want to be creative, here we're going to be in, into, the, into the car, into the motor, you need three parts. Three parts, and this is very important. The first one is talent. It's not a knowledge, it's the ability that some people have they, uh, they know to make something better than other people. We don't know why. It's just, and everybody's got talent. Everybody. Nobody doesn't have any talent. That's why the parents, when they've got a baby or a little child, they uh, try to, to give him a lot of uh, activities, 
uh, about uh, sport, about art, uh, about uh, physics, mathematics, literature, uh, foreign language, things like that, because they want to discover the talent of their son or their daughter. They want to discover this talent. What is important to get in your mind, very, very important, is that you can discover talent during all your life. It's not just when you are a child or a baby. Even when you get old, even when you get sick, we, we speak about uh, uh, Alzheimer, old people who have problems with their mind, they can have talent. We have seen, for instance, some people, very old, who cannot um, have a discussion, but so they need to express, and they use uh, painting to express. And by painting, we realize that they were very, very good painters. But if they, if they have uh, all their brain and they have good discussion with language, they never use painting. So nobody knows that they have this talent. Okay? So live in your life a maximum of experiences, many, many experiences with different kinds of people all the time, because it's like that you will find the talent. This is very important. So this is a state of mind. Everybody can do it. Just you, you have to know that it does exist. If you know that it does exist, and if you have this state of mind, you can discover that you have many, many talents. And uh, about the, the, the talent, what is very important is fluidity, flexibility, being original, and be, uh, being able also to elaborate new solutions. Sorry. Because, uh, for instance, if you, you can uh, play uh, piano, if you are a musician, you can be the, the best uh, pianist in the world. When you will see piano for the first time, you will discover that you can play a little bit, but it's only when you will work with a professor that after 10 or 20 courses, but you will realize that you go faster and that you are better than other students. And it's in this way that you're going to realize that you, are, you have a talent. Even if you are the best pianist in the world, you need a professor. You're not going to be the best, the best uh, piano player in the world immediately. You need to learn. You need to improve. But you will see very fast that it's easy for you. Sometimes, this is also very important, it's not because you have a talent that you're going to love it. We have many people who love success and they do things that they don't appreciate just because they have talent about this. In reality, it's a sort of, uh, um, it's, it's uh, an easy way. It's an easy way, it's not uh, uh, an easy, but it's easy way. Be, be careful about this because uh, it's not because you have success and because you have talent that you can be happy in your life. So be sure that you're going to make something that you love, even if it is difficult for you, is more important than one to create and to use your talent. This is also very important. So talent is important, but talent is not everything in life. Okay? This is the first important thing about creativity. The second one is energy. Energy is very, 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 very important. When you have some ideas that you propose, many, many ideas that you use creativity, it's a pleasure, I told you, but in reality, it, it uses a lot of energy. Individually, collectively, and uh, some, sometimes with the, the way, with your social way with the rest of people. So you can notice that sometimes you can have some artists which are very, very aggressive with other people just because they are tired. For instance, in Europe, we have a, a, a famous musician, a famous artist who is Stromae. And Stromae creates uh, in music a specific long play, and, uh, which is fantastic. But uh, since this long play, it's impossible for him to create again because he gives too much 
too many ideas at the same time in just one creation. And in it, maybe two years, five years, 10 years to get the ability to create again. So don't uh, underestimate the fact that creativity uses a lot of energy. People can have the feeling outside when they are not creative, but a creative guy is just uh, like an artist and uh, he enjoy and uh, is just uh, playing with uh, different things. So it's funny, it's a game, but in reality, it is also energy. Be very, very, uh, very aware of it. It's very, very important because uh, uh, working a lot in uh, something with process, uh, with doing the same thing all the time is tiring, but having some idea is tiring also. And this energy can be physical, can be um, in your mind, in your good mood. You can be just in a bad mood because you're tired. And it can be also spiritual. When you propose new ID, uh, you can change your own value and you can change your spirituality. And sometimes people uh, lose their beliefs, lose their value just because they create new new things and new id this is also very very important that's why when you are an artist or when you want to be creative when you want a creative person you need to go to museum you need to go to exhibition you need to go to cinema you need to try a new taste a new food a meeting new people from different cultures things like that because this is a very good way to go back energy with new ideas if you're just alone and try to get ideas and ideas and again and again and again, you're going to be very completely exhausted. The, the share and the exchange with other people, with different people, which are not the same culture as you, with different paradigm, different vision, different future and abilities is essential. This is very, very important. So when you have talent and when you understand that you need energy, you need a methodology. This is very important. And about uh, methodology, it does exist a lot. So I'm going to present you some methodology very fast, but just to present you the evolution and the history of uh, creativity. Because in reality, we understand that it's, uh, it's not very important to be an expert and uh, to to, 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 have a, to, to master a specific methodology. What is very important is to understand the process because the process is always the same, uh, whatever is the methodology. So just understand all the, the methodology does exist and it's okay, you don't need any more. Um, here I present you something which is uh, very important, which is uh, a consequence of why I just explained about uh, energy and what you, you are about talent. It is a Japanese um, a creation knowledge and it's very, very, very important to my mind for uh, not just for Japanese and for the rest of the world. It is a Kigai. I don't know if uh, with you uh, some people know Ikigai. Ikigai is very important because Ikigai is uh, the, uh, the meeting between what you love, where are your talent, where you're good in life, um, what you need, and why people pay you. And you need to be at the same time with some, something what you love, because if you don't love something, you cannot do this uh, every day for a long period. So you're not going to go to the deep. So love is very important. Talent is also very important because uh, if you love something, but uh, you are bad uh, with other people, it's not very interesting. What you need, because if you have good talent, but to express your talent, you, you don't just need a piano, but uh, you need uh, all or orchestra, and you need, uh, I don't know, uh, a big theater and it's very expensive. So certainly it's impossible for you to express your talent and do what you love. So be sure that to understand exactly what you need and to be very precise about this. And uh, if people are going to pay, because at the moment, money is very important. 
So if nobody wants to pay for your talent, for what you love and for what you need, you will get a problem. And when you have the mix, and it's interesting because if you are in the need and what you love, you are in the vocation. If you are in what you love and where are your talent, you are in the passion. If you are where you are, you're going to be paid and when you are talent, you are in the profession, you are professional. And if you are paid and what you need, you are in the mission. The difference is very, very important because according to your life, life is not uh, linear. So you, you have some part in your life where love will be very, very important. Other part where money will be more important and at the moment talent or need. So it's important to understand that it's not linear and to agree and to accept this uh, part of your life where every, everything's going to change. And Japanese people does explain this very, very good. And they explain it especially to their children. And this is very, very, very important. Okay. So uh, I want you to, uh, to explain you this. This is uh, all the more important now than for uh, just one year. It's very uh, recent. It's, uh, it's new, uh, new information. All over the world, uh, investors ask company to get uh, what we call uh, raison d'être. Raison d'être is a specificity where you explain that uh, you are a company, for instance, you are an airplane company. So your objective is uh, to take people from Paris to go to Los Angeles, uh, for instance, after uh, to Tokyo, uh, to Dubai, uh, things like that. But this is just your job. The way you're going to make your job, uh, are you going to make this with maximum of comfort? Are you going to do that with a lower price? Are you going to do that uh, very fast with a very good plane? Uh, it's going to change completely your raison d'être, raison d'être. And now investor just want that you are very performant in your job, in the company, company is able to make money. Okay, it's good, but they want to understand the raison d'être because raison d'être is, uh, is very, very important. And raison d'être is in reality to the company some adaptation from Ikigai. So Ikigai is for people and raison, raison d'être is for company. This is very, very important, very modern and presently everybody wants to get this. So it's important because about management, it means that uh, we don't want genius and we don't want people who are very performant because if they are just performant by themselves being alone, like, for instance, people like uh, Steve Jobs or things like that. It's not a good way to create value in a team and for a company. So now raison d'être and Ikigai is essential because when you have Ikigai, you work on yourself and you know, you, you know better what you can propose to other people. And you're not going to say, okay, I'm a professional. I can uh, make some course about management, about strategy. No, you can say, okay, I'm a professional. You can pay for me about this, but also I love that. Also, I need that. And also I'm good, I am good talent about that. So the discussion with over is richer, very essential to get a better cre value creation. The only objective is value creation, very, very important. So it's important to work on yourself to be better about creativity and to be better about efficiency. So when you are with many, many people, by the fact that these people uh, mix each other, uh, they, uh, they pass, they change. Uh, Yael, like that. Oui? Yael, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Miss Remy, you know, from Christophe is there. Perfect. I, I make a break, no problem. <laughs> ting ting. Miss Remy is here. Hello. <laughs> Bonjour. Maintenant, c'est le menu en, en Chine déjà. <laughs> <laughs> Nathalie, tu nous entends? Je sais pas si elle nous entend.
J'avais coupé mon micro, désolée. Ah, okay. bon, bonjour. Bonjour. Il okay. se fait tard chez vous. Yes, in China, it's uh, around midnight. So, how is the level of energy at midnight? Oui, le cours est super bien et notre étudiant son enfant. Même Très bien. Ok, Nathalie, uh, we just have a little technical problem. Uh, Michel was disconnected a couple of minutes ago. We just mm -hmm. tried to get him back, so please just wait 60 seconds. And just for information, we have people from China. This is the biggest group, around eight, nine students. Uh, mm -hmm. People from Qatar, from Dubai, from England, and from Cameroon. Okay, and obviously going around France. the world. Yes, all around the world. And this is uh, Professor Le Bouche, that you can see, the guy with the beer. Professor, yes. this is uh, Nathalie Rémy, the world CEO of this station. Okay, now I need to wear my jacket though. <laughs> okay. Oops. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we cannot have uh, Michel on Zoom. We don't know what's going on. So he's on Skype on another laptop. <laughs> that's okay, the beauty so, uh, of technology. Yes, that's fantastic. Um, mm. so you, uh, guys, I know that uh, Dean Sirk and Miss Remy have busy agenda. So let's try to be uh, straight to the point. We spent the day talking about new technologies, projects, etc. So I'm going to let uh, Miss Remy uh, speaking. It's an honor to be with you today. And then we will let uh, Dr. Serf concluding. So we can applaud Miss Remy for this fantastic project. Please, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Marcel, do you want me to, to, to explain a bit the, 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 the purpose of this partnership? Yes, because to tell you the truth, you know, we spend the day with different companies, different professors, and they know what it is about, but uh, it's really uh, your vision of the project. In a couple of words, huh? Mm. So you all know Christopher, right? So the, the worldwide leader of silversmithing, uh, it's a French company. Uh, our products are made in Normandy in the northwest of France. Um, so indeed, we, we are really delighted about this uh, partnership uh, for the Chair de Recherche um, with the doctorate of ESGCI, uh, so the DBA, in partnership with the uh, University of San Diego. Um, uh, it's a doctorate that is, as you know, specialized in uh, luxury uh, research. Uh, and as a French luxury brand, uh, it was quite natural that we engaged in two conversations, um, I think, last year. Um, the objective of this um, res research um, uh, fund is really to create links, right, between the scientific world, I would say, and the research world, um, and academic world too, because uh, with all the professors, and on the other side of the bridge, uh, a real luxury brand with daily operational challenges uh, and to see how we can basically uh, uh, make, a, make it a win-win uh, partnership. So basically how, how it will work um, is that a, any luxury professional can apply uh, to become a doctorate student uh, and to propose to the, to the lab uh, one topic, one idea uh, that they would like to work on for a three-year term. And we at Christophe are delighted to work jointly, hand in hand with the, these students uh, on very concrete issues um, for our business. Uh, so of course, 
all the research will be published. I think there was already a very nice publication recently in the Harvard Business Review. There will be more. I'm sure there will be more uh, in uh, HBR and, and other uh, very prestigious um, uh, research papers. There will also be uh, two uh, allocations uh, for two students, I think already this year in 2020, Marcel. Um, yes, exactly. And you know, um, Nathalie, uh, Charlie Aubin, the research proposal that you read, you know, last week, yes. because we talked about Where it, is so she? She's... Charlie, Hello. where are you? Hiya. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes, very nice. We'll have plenty of opportunities to discuss. Cheers. <laughs> So, so basically, my, my ambition with this project is really to um, open the professional students to one of, you know, the, uh, the highlight of the French patrimony, because Christophe has been around now for 190 years and is a true luxury brand uh, in its uh, core DNA. But on very advanced topics like uh, uh, artificial intelligence, like digital innovation, and, and, and to create scientific research that we can immediately apply. And for the short term, uh, we would like to focus on growth and basically on two areas for growth. One is about customer experience and basically to build a stronger pool of new and loyal customers. And the other one is on conversion to help us to drive our growth of top line. So that's really our focus uh, with this partnership. So it's like a blend between tradition, heritage, and the most advanced modernity of scientific and academic research. Um, and uh, we started already. So I was in the Royal Boutique on Monday with Michel, uh, Michel Chaloub. And we have actually a little robot called Charlie. So it's not a joke, Charlie. It's really, a, uh, it's really his nickname. <laughs> Uh, as a reference to Charles Christophe, who created this company almost two centuries ago. And Charlie is actually, uh, since a few days, welcoming our clients in the boutique, um, uh, showcasing them some small movies around the brand, interacting with them. And Charlie is actually a little robot uh, connected to artificial intelligence um, of Nestor uh, type. And through this experimentation, we will collect a lot of data that I'm sure will be uh, useful uh, both to Michel to finalize his uh, doctor, doctorate uh, thesis and, and to us to learn much more about the customer behavior when they arrive in our boutiques. Wonderful. So thanks for uh, the briefing. Um, it was really clear, uh, really direct. Um, Dr. Seth? You told me to be short, so I tried yes. to be short. Perfect. It's really perfect. Uh, doctor, we can upload her. Thanks, Natalie. It's a fantastic opportunity. You're so kind. And maybe Dr. Sack, if you want to add a couple of words. Okay. Uh, thanks, Natalie. I'm, I'm very proud to, to work with, uh, with Christophe, such a a great, a great brand on, on luxury business uh, in Paris, but also in the world. Uh, I'm very proud because, you know, it's really important for ESG schools to have some students who work on a case study who are really related to real companies and real problematics mm -hmm. of companies, you know. And that's why uh, we always work with uh, Marcel and uh, with LCA, with SMNB, all the companies that own Marcel about the uh, real cooperation between companies and school, you know. Okay, mm -hmm. that, and, it's really a pleasure to have some students work on real fields, and I'm very sure that a lot of students, and uh, of course in DBA more, can uh, bring some real opportunities to uh, brand uh, business in luxury. You know, it's 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 uh, why I'm very proud, and I'm sure the students who works uh, like in MBA, well, enroll in MBA right now, and the future ones can bring you some brand, some good ideas about. EA about a lot of uh, business opportunities for Christophe and your brand and I'm very delighted to work uh, with a brand like uh, like Christophe and I'm really thank thankful about about this opportunity also Michel and Marcel to have linked us together 
And I hope we can have uh, some time a uh, real uh, meeting with Champagne and we can sign on and not ah, only yes. online. <laughs> it will be a pleasure. Yes, likewise. Okay. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, we are really welcome in the ESGCI group and uh, we are very proud to work with Christophe. Okay. Mm. Thanks very much for your, uh, for your trust. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, 40 seconds and I'm concluding for the next uh, dates, important dates. So tomorrow, uh, Michel Chaloub and myself are going to give a conference uh, at Harvard, organized by Harvard, by Harvard Business Review on the Christophe Le Case. Uh, so this is the first uh, international publication of Michel Chaloub. So we're very really proud uh, of it. And uh, there will be also the first release of the video of the Charles Robot in the boutique Christophe. Look, that will. Be, that will be after all these crisis things. We are in, on the obligation to do it online today. And uh, indeed, champagne in a Christophe glasses would be a perfect uh, start for collaboration. <laughs> Very well said. everyone. So let's get back to work now. <laughs> Thank you. I wish you, you. A, a lot of courage to the Asian team because I don't know how long you're still going to go. Um, and uh, I hope to... Uh, okay, still one hour. And uh, okay. indeed, let's uh, try to regroup in person maybe uh, after summer hopefully by then uh, things will uh, calm down a bit take care okay see you bye, bye. 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 thanks okay professor professor le bouche please you can proceed okay we still there he thought maybe it was over. Uh, it's okay, you listen to me. No problem, you can hear me? Yes, yes, yes no problem. Perfect. So, I, I'm going to go on. So I was explaining to you the importance of uh, Ikigai and the importance of raison d'être now in, uh, in companies. And uh, we start to, to realize that uh, ideas are everywhere in our life. When we meet uh, somebody that we share with, uh, we have a discussion, uh, when we go for shopping, things like that, ideas are everywhere. So this is very, very important because uh, some people think that uh, ideas got a big and huge value. Or, uh, as I told you before, um, ideas got a value only if it is a solution in a specific context. When idea is not a solution for ev everybody, even if you, you discover, uh, I don't know, uh, a new way to, uh, to have water, but nobody needs water, it's no use. So this is very, very important. Ideas got a value only when there is a specific context. And to identify this context, you need a, a group of people, a team. Generally, it's very rare, but it is just one person alone by yourself uh, or himself. Uh, you need a team. And this team is going to work on the use case of this ID. Try to understand the need, try to understand the market of the ID. And uh, with this team, you're going to work a lot. You will have uh, complex uh, process and different things like that. And at the moment, you will propose a concept 
And with this concept, you need to get in front of you a customer. And this, if this is ready to pay, then it's okay. Then you will get uh, some idea you will with value, a value added ID. So the value creation disappear only when you have customer. You know that's why you have here. If you are just here in the in the, the ID in the crowd, it's no use. It doesn't have any value. But if you have a concept and at the moment a people is ready to pay for this concept. It's no more an idea, it's a concept, and here there is value creation. Like in the movie section. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's very easy to, to understand why uh, ID doesn't have any value. When you have some idea, I told you it's, uh, it's a pleasure in life. And uh, you can say, okay, uh, I have an idea, I can sh create a new product and uh, it can be useful for that kind of people okay and uh, i can pay uh, i can sell it for that price and but no more so you have some characteristic just a few uh, few characteristic but not really very precise if you get a concept you will need to get the insights uh, for customers uh, the brand uh, the, the unique selling proposition the credibility why people are ready to pay for this, uh, what is uh, about the emotion, what emotion does it create, the title, the text, the visual, the packaging, you see, you're very, 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 very precise. So between the concept and the ID, the world is completely different, and the difference is a lot of work. You need a lot of work. And the problem is that you have too many people who appreciate to get some ID, and with IDs, they go to even. I told you it's a pleasure in life. And so at the moment, you can say, OK, I'm a genius. I have many ideas. I can change the world. It's fantastic and things like that. And in reality, the problem is not to be in heaven. The problem is to go back on Earth. Here is the problem. And when you go back on Earth, there is a crash. Here is uh, when you have to pay attention a lot. So. In reality, I say that some ID is only good when it is in the, uh, in the head of your neighbor. You need to, to, to understand this. If you're just alone with your ID, you have a big pleasure. It's very nice. But in reality, the value of ID is sure is new. But if the ID is ready to go to the, the head of your neighbor, then it's okay. It's the beginning of the value creation. So about creativity, we had uh, a very interesting article in Wired. Uh, it's 10 years ago, but it is, uh, the, the, the knowledge is always very, very good. Wired organized a meeting between uh, Kevin Kelly, who were uh, a sort of uh, um, a guru, a very important person for Silicon Valley, uh, things like that like uh, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, uh, love to, to, to have discussion with uh, Kevin Kelly, is uh, very, very good about this. And uh, with a young man, so the difference of age is huge, with a very different uh, career with not the same studies, which is uh, Steve Johnson, who created a startup and was the director of Seed Magazine. So the two profiles are very, very different. And uh, they were asked them the same questions about creativity. And what is very interesting is that uh, according to the difference that they got, which, has, uh, which are huge, they give uh, the same answer. And both say that one ID is uh, creating um, uh, appear in different place at the same time. This is very important. It's no use uh, telling to yourself, oh, I've got a very good idea. I don't want to speak about it with uh, other people because they're going to take my ID. If you, you've got this ID, other people in the world do have exactly the same ID. So don't need to protect your ID. It's no use. It's just stop the value creation. So share your ID. Share your ID with the maximum of people. 
with a big number of people. Um, IDs uh, works like uh, ecosystem. This is very, very important when you work in uh, innovation, you always work with ecosystem, not with network. Network is interesting, but network is very poor in comparison with ecosystem because in ecosystem, you never know who is going to create the value. In a network, the guy who is at the mid middleman from the maximum of people generally gets the maximum of value. In ecosystem, not at all. What is just important is being a part of the ecosystem. At some moment, you can win. Some of you will not get anything, but you will have a lot of work. It's not important. What is important is having a part, being a part of the ecosystem. And uh, Kelly say they travel in group. I did travel in group. You, you, you never have just one ID alone. You generally, when you have one ID, you have two, three, five, ten other IDs with this ID. This is very, very important. Um, when you transform ID in innovation, generally it's a little step that many people can do and you, we don't know why, and you also, you don't know why, uh, you succeed in making this step before the other people. So what is the most important is to make this new step before the other. So don't try to protect your ID on the opposite share your ID with the maximum of people and try to be the faster. Sure, but if you take risk, you will go faster than if you are very conservative. So it's just a question of speed. It's not a question of your ability to, to have a maximum of original ID, being a genius. No, just a question of speed. That's why sometimes it's better for big companies to succeed in transforming ideas in innovation because they have uh, more uh, rich, uh, more competencies than startup. And at some moment, they, sometimes agility is, uh, is not always here, but with these big competencies, they can go very fast and very deep. Generally, when you have innovation, most of the innovation comes from open network and uh, not from making business. This is also very important. The best ideas and the best ecosystem at the beginning was just to create a benefit and to solve a, a problem. People just want to solve a problem. At the beginning, they don't want to make money. The business model comes, but after. At the beginning, just the idea, just the objective to solve the problem. This is also very important. It shows you that it's very important to get open, not only in your mind, but also in your social, re uh, social relationship. <clears throat> Don't just be with rich, intelligent people, or you will lose innovation. Stupid people are very useful. It's very important. Um, if you have a great idea that you are too much in advance, and that you are alone, you, you will never get uh, money and success. This is very important. You need a team. It's not the, the wow effect. Everybody wants the wow effect. Is uh, always... Um, uh, um, um, It's just by chance. When you have wow effect, generally you never do and propose. It's just by chance. It's just being lucky. So don't try to get the good idea. Don't try to get the revolution. Just get idea that you can share with maximum of people. Don't be alone. This is only the only thing. Yes, when you have a great idea, generally it is serendipity. That's why I was, uh, now I remember. It was serendipity, and we told that we told that it was not. We are not interested in serendipity. Um, something which is also very very important about creativity is the right to do mistake, and also the right to do anything. If you say to yourself, "Oh, I have to be very serious 
I have to be uh, in the in the framework. Uh, I um, I have problem with my company, with my resource, my competences, my talent. You will never get creativity. It's very important that you can try and mistake. Okay, it, it's fail. It's not a problem. I try, 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 and try again. This is very, very important if you want to get some success. This is more about success than about ID. It's very, it's very original because it's not logical, but if you want to get a great success, it's important to fail many times. Very, very important. When you work with uh, investors, especially uh, capital venture, uh, they adore people who fail. Because if they fail, if they try again, they understand that the, the, the entrepreneur, the guy with, uh, with the project is solid, but it's not going to be in depression because he doesn't have any success. So it's important for them because they sure that they're not going to lose their money. If you are with only people who get success during all their life, it's that if at the moment they fail, you never know what consequences can be. And if because they fail, they are in depression, it's finished for you, you lose your money. So it's very, very important if you want to get success to have many fail. It's, uh, it's not uh, logical, but it's really like that. And what is essential if you want to get uh, creativity and uh, to have success with innovation is to get environment very generous, very, very generous. If you have all around you people who tell you, okay, you need uh, to try this object. Okay, I give you the object, do what you want. Uh, you need time, okay, you don't go to work tomorrow, you need time, I give you one, two, three days to, to think about it and to find a solution. All that kind of attitude help you to have very good ideas and very good innovation. Uh, you, you know, with Google, you have one or two days per week where you can work on your project on what you want. It's because it's very important being in environment very generous. If you are with people with, who don't want to be generous, you will not be you you will cannot be with creativity. So this is also again Japan. I'm not going to, to explain um, it's the fact that in, in Japan, it's very specific and especially due to uh, the, the culture of Japan and also the, the way of writing. It's the same with uh, China. We have many China in this, in this course. Uh, the way they are thinking creativity is very specific with uh, Kansai. Kansai is a specific and unique technique about creativity. I'm not going to develop that now because it's not the objective, but it's also very interesting to, 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 to work in creativity with Japanese people because uh, the way of thinking is uh, very original. But there is not just Japan. Now, more and more, especially in, uh, in a specific uh, place where they were in the street, it's very funny in a former uh, um, uh, plant, in former plant, for instance, um, you have now a specific place to help you to get creativity. And then you go to this specific place with your team and you buy half a day or one day, two days, three days of creativity. And they give you a coach you explain what is your problem, you explain what is your question, and with the coach and leaving some experience, specific experience, for instance, here people are uh, touching a uh, wall, you can have a difference of temperature, you can uh, be in a different uh, room, very big ro room, and after a very small room, um, with people you never know in your life, things like that, you will get this creativity. And this uh, place, the ID factory, it is the ID factory, help you to get uh, great IDs. And presently, many, many big companies use them. Uh, for instance, here I, I show you something which is in Switzerland. 
The name is uh, Brainstore. And um, in uh, Brainstore in, in uh, Biel, in Switzerland, you, you go to this ID factory and they help you to find solution and to have a very efficient IDs. This is very interesting. It shows you that IDs is no more just the job of uh, marketing people or creative people. It's now becoming um, uh, some uh, uh, richness that you can buy and uh, you buy the specificity of the knowledge just for uh, one day or two days. James Cameron, as an artist, uses this a lot when he wants to make a movie. For instance, about uh, Avatar, Avatar uh, movie, with the blue character, he has a problem because uh, he could not find the blue. The blue color is very specific in Avatar, and he go to Brainstore to find the good blue. Blue color. So now that uh, we have understand the we have understood the importance of uh, creativity, we're going to try how does it work to understand the process uh, to make the difference to help you to be very effective in uh, in the team where we're going to work about science or about company and uh, creativity is the meeting between imaginary and reality. This is very important. When you, you go to the imaginary dream, when, when you go to your dream, and when you go to the reality, the real problem, very concrete, between both, there is a meeting, and here there are new ideas. The question is, what way are you going to choose? Do you want to, to start from reality, from the problem in the reality, and try to get some dream? I have a dream. It's exactly like this. Martin Luther King is this way. Or do you go from the dream? And uh, generally artists do that. They have imagination, they have a, a dream, and they want to create this dream in the reality. Both ways are interesting. Not one way is better than another one. It depends on your personality and your ability to go to the dream or to go to the reality. And then you, um, here you have a new definition of not creativity, but creativity of ideas. It's a very specific definition. And uh, ID creativity is the ability to produce a new and adapt to context uh, a new idea for a specific context. It is uh, Todd Lubart, and Todd Lubart is very good uh, about psychology of creativity. It's uh, idea creativity is the ability to produce new idea, adapt for a context, context specific. And then um, to to get this two way from the dream to reality or the reality to the dream. Either you use method, methodology, especially to go from reality to the dream. Here, methodology is very, very important. Are you going to use the emotional dynamic of a team? At the moment, you will create a specific team with generally people who are very, very different. It's important that the profile of people inside the, the, the team are not the same, and they go into they, they don't know each other at the beginning, and they go in to to discover how to of who they are, but according to the project, the project is a paradigm of the meeting. This is very very interesting. And then you use this methodology. So about methodology, you can go to this uh, website, mycotid.com. Uh, category creativity technicals and you will see you have more than 185 creativity techniques so i told you uh, the most important is not the the technique uh, creativity technique the most is important is to understand the process because the process whatever is the the technique on the 185 the process is always the same okay So, to be creative, you need 
post-it, you need a whiteboard, you need pen, it's very easily. And after you need this team. And as I told you, it's very important in the team. People can, uh, can, can know each other in over experience, but about the new problem, about the new question that you want to work, work on it, you need that they never work on it together. It's very important. So if people don't know each other, they never meet in their life, it's better. Because the fact that you have a foreigner in the group change completely the way and the behavior uh, that you have into the group. So this is already creativity. This is already very original. And this is very important. For instance, me in, uh, in my company in EDF, I have a problem uh, with my uh, finance, uh, finance uh, man, uh, the financer, because uh, they have problem about uh, the treasury treasury of uh, the daily life uh, project and uh, they cannot accept uh, new innovation they cannot accept new id because they like uh, that uh, end user customer pay uh, automatically by uh, the internet and they just want to use this technical and uh, it was impossible to explain to them that other technique does exist they just say no 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 it worked very well we didn't change the technique uh, to help them to change their paradigm, to have a new state of mind, uh, I asked to uh, a Jewish rabbin to go and explain to them why it was important to them to change their way of thinking. They were very, very surprised, but I asked a rabbin and not another financier to explain. And they told me why. Why did you take a rabbin? Is a religious, is, is, his job is not money. Why you ask uh, for a rabbin to help us? The reason was very, very simple. Is that the problem of my financer was that uh, they have belief very hard. So it was more a question of ideology, of belief, than a question of finance. So I asked to a religious man to help them. And it worked very well. So don't hesitate to put in your team Profile very exotic, profile very different from all over because it gives very, very, very good result. But the problem is always the same. You never know what will be the result, but there will be a result, an interesting and efficient result. But you never know before what it is. And so when you have these intellectual tools and this team, you can start to get some creativity. But to get this creativity, you need to use a new language, a new language with the team. Because people don't know each other, they don't know the problem, they don't know the, the, the subject, they have to discover with the group, with the new team, and they're going to learn also to communicate each other. So it is in reality a new language. So when you make a meeting for creativity for one hour or two hours, no more, because after it's too long, one hour is very, very good. Um, but anticipate the fact that you have one hour when people are discovering, discovering each other. And after this first meeting, you make a break. So, so Sometimes it is uh, uh, one day or one week. And after you have a new meeting, and it's a second meeting that they're going to, to work on the subject. The first meeting, you, you, you explain the subject, but the first meeting, the, the objective is that they discover each other and that they create this new sort of language, this new language that be, will help the group to be creative. It's a new language. And in this new language, what is very, very important is that nobody judge other people. During the beginning of creativity, nobody has to judge or not. They just say, okay, your idea is interesting. It gives me another idea. This is my idea. But no, never something like, oh, this idea never work. We try it. It doesn't work. This is completely, uh, it's too original. It's not the, cu the culture of the company. It's impossible. 
all these are judgment. And if you judge too early, you stop the creativity process. So help people to develop a new language, a new language as a team around the problem, and don't use judge and stop people when they want to judge. About the, the language of creativity, um, this language can be very uh, un unuseful and very original. Um, generally, people, when they speak, they are afraid of judgment. And we say that we stop judgment. So uh, during uh, when they take, when they speak, uh, let them to say, OK, um, I have an idea. I start a sentence, but I don't finish a sentence. It's not logical. Uh, I have uh, I have to express uh, one or two words completely stupid and completely different from uh, normally the logical uh, uh, way I have to explain. But I need it. I want to express this and uh, be open-minded and accept that other people just say work, don't finish their sentences, uh, just uh, express uh, uh, impression or emotion then try to be logical and structurate. This is very, very, very important. And then uh, it's at the beginning of the group when they're going to start the meeting, they will be more and more interested with other people. They will understand that nobody judge them. And at the end of the meeting, generally they will propose many very interesting ideas. But at the beginning, the most important is to stop the fear, the fear of the judgment. Very, very important. And when people are going to forget the, the, peer, the fear, they will forget also the habits. They will forget, try to be intelligent, try to be very, uh, very um, brilliant and to create a wow effect. And then other people can build on the ID some other ideas. This is very, very, very important. It's, uh, it's important to have, uh, when somebody express one ID, another people express another ID. If uh, you have just one ID and nobody know what you can do with this, it's no use. It is a bad ID. When it is a good ID, it's because everybody wants to use it and want to change it. Okay? This is very, very important. When uh, you have this, after you can create you can play with word. Play with word is also very important to get some ideas. For instance, if uh, people ask you to work about uh, what is hot, uh, you can work on cold, because by cold you will find some ideas that you don't have if you just think about hot. Uh, about perfume, you can uh, work, for instance, about the packaging of perfume. It can help you to improve the perfume because there is a link. So don't try to be very precise about what people ask you about the problem. You can change the way of thinking the problem. Also, the, the sound is very interesting. If at the moment you work with a word, you can change this word because the sound is uh, beautiful or uh, easy to pronounce. So don't you use everything. Try not just to be logical with the beginning with hypothesis and at the end of your sentence, the conclusion. Play with the word. It's very, very, very important. This is a new language. This is a language, associative language, but create creativity. And then when you will do it, at the beginning, you will just play by when um, when you are in uh, literal thinking when you write, when you want to to make a very beautiful uh, sentences um, you will try to play just with word and word are uh, narrow very narrow and you need very you know you you want to to exit from a narrow corridor so don't stay with this uh, literary uh, thinking Try to go to the thinking, not with the word, but with image. And if you think with image, 
It's okay, you're already in the dream and you're already in the imagination. Imagination is thinking with image. It's very, very important. And generally, we think with word. That's why we are very bonded and limited in a way of thinking. If you think with image, you will be more efficient than if you think with word. And after, when you start to think with image, you will go to the ID world. And when you will be into the ID world, you will be in the dream. And being in the dream, then you can get some IDs. New IDs according to your, uh, your, your problem when you want to solve and find a solution. So, if it, is, uh, if it works, why do we judge? What have we got this, uh, this uh, user, this habit to judge everything all the time? Um, the reason is very simple. To judge is very useful because if you're not able to judge anything and also to, to, to criticize, you will not be able to make a decision. When you make a decision, it's because you judge. If you don't judge, you cannot make decisions. That's why we judge all the time. That's why we say to other people, I don't agree with you and your idea is stupid. It's because beyond this, beyond the sentence, the, beyond, beyond the sentences, we want to act. We want to make decision. We want to act on the environment. That's why we judge. If we saw that about the consequences of what the guys say, what the guy think, it doesn't have any consequences about our life, we don't judge. But if what people is going to say has consequence on, on our life, we judge because we know that his decision is going to be in your life. If this is very, very, very important. And this ability to judge, we learn when we are child, by education, especially when we are in France. In France, we judge a lot. And we love a lot uh, conflict. You can see that uh, every day people uh, are uh, in riot, things like that. It's very normal in France. But people criticize politics and uh, make some manifestation. It's completely normal. It's the culture. So according to the culture and the, the education of the country, you have this ability to judge or not. But the more you judge, the less you have place for imagination. So, for instance, when you go to the UK, uh, they don't judge so much as in France, and they are much more original culturally. The, 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 the UK culture is more original than French culture, which is more conservative. Okay? It's according to the culture, according to the culture. Um, also, the sociologic structure are very important. In your family, in the school, in your company, according to the value, according to the people who are there, of course, you, you get used to judge or not. And this is going to, to have some consequences on your way of thinking, on your party. Also, the culture of uh, critics, as I said about French, French people uh, get used to critic everything. It's not more, it's uh, our conception of liberty. In the US, you are free when you have a weapon. In France, you are free because you, you open your mouth all the time. Okay? It's just a question of culture. And also the expert attitude. This is a problem. If a moment you know very well a subject, you know very well a topic, uh, a, a field, uh, and you are an expert about this uh, domain, uh, you're not able to create something about the, 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 the problem. Because you know that if you use the solution, a solution for the a problem, it will work. So you say, no, it is efficient. So why do you want that I am creative? Because I know that it works. And this also is a problem. When you are very good in a topic, uh, it's better that you go out the team to be creative because 
you're going to judge very fast because you are expert, you are very good. And then it's no good. But expert is very good. Huh? But expert is somebody who judge very fast. That's why you pay for it. Because he's able to make a decision and to help you make decision because he judge very fast. So it's important not to use this at the beginning of the process of creativity. Okay, this is it's, it's complex to explain by, by distance. Okay, this is also very, very important. I, uh, I adore Roger von Esch. Roger von Esch is a professor in Stanford University. He's a very open-minded man, very, very interesting person. And he explained that when you are a creator, when you are in creativity uh, uh, conception, and when you want to be very creative in your, in your life, you will go by four steps, four steps. And it's always in this order. It's very, very organized. The first one is you want to discover. At the beginning, you are very curious and you ask many, many questions. So you are very creative because you ask more questions than other people. You ask questions for everything. It's exactly what uh, do a baby. When you have a little child that just discovers the world, he asks questions to his parents all the time about everything. It's completely exhausting for the parent. That is completely normal and very interesting. So if you, if you keep in your mind this child attitude, wanted to discover everything all the time, you will be very good in creativity. But at the moment, being uh, uh, some explorer to discover everything is not enough. You need to be an artist because you say, okay, I ask many questions, I add many answers, and I realize that my way of looking at the reality, my vision is very original and that I can propose a uh, very original way. And uh, I have a modest proposal, I have an um, original uh, thing, and other people are interested about this. So I become an artist. So the first one is explorer, and after an artist. And after you realize being an artist that your vision of the world is very good, and sometimes better than most of people. And then you judge, you become a judge. Because you say, no, my conception of the world is not dominant. I'm an artist, I'm original, but in reality, I'm right. I'm better than other. And then you become a judge. And if at the moment you are completely convinced that you are the best, you become a conqueror. 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 And you want to say, to explain to other people that you are the best and that they follow you. Concurrent? Ah. A conqueror. <laughs> no, concurrent, okay. competitor, competitor. Uh, comp no. Okay. Un conquérant? Okay. Ouais, c'est ça. Yeah. Conquérant is a... Conqueror. 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 Okay. okay. And uh, this is very important because these four steps are in this order, and it's always like that. At the beginning, explorer, after artist, after judge, and at the end, conqueror. And uh, when you are in front of uh, people who are who is creative, uh, be this in your mind, because you can see immediately if it is possible to put into the team or not. If the team has big problem, is in crisis, I don't know exactly where he has to go, the conqueror is very useful. But if the team need new ID, is open-minded, there is no emergency, if the conqueror is here, he's going to kill everybody. So then you need just an explorer. Okay? According to the context, if there is emergency or not, and if you want to change radically or not, you need a conqueror or you need explorer. This is very important. And in the middle, I put it on the slide, this is very important, you have lead user. Lead user are very, very, very important people in our society. 
And it's only for uh, five years, they, they always exist. In every society all over the world, uh, all over culture, they are lead user. But it's only five years, very, it's very, 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 very new. But we, we realize that these people can help us to change the way of thinking of everybody. And um, in marketing, during a very long period, they tried to make some poll with uh, a representative population, with a good balance between men, female, young people, old people, things like that. And we realize in reality that it is just belief and it, is not, it does not work. Because it's not going, it's not because you, your product um, is attractive for the biggest part of the population, that uh, the people are ready to pay for this. Lead users are very, very useful because lead users can be ambassadors. So they are not representative of the population. It can be many women or many men, many young or many old, but they will help you to convince and to explain to others that we can think differently and to go to a new paradigm. So lead users are very, very, very important. They have a huge value. So when you are between a guy who is creative and who is between the artist attitude and the judge attitude, is a lead user is very good for you. Try to get them around you. Me, in my community, in France, I have uh, 5,500 people who follow me in my innovation all over the friends, 5,500 uh, 5, people. And uh, I know that I have around uh, 400 lead users. It is huge because generally they are not, uh, it's just one person. I have, uh, uh, yes, around 400 lead users. And these guys help me in my daily life, in my job, all the time. Sometimes they, they write the argument to convince <clears throat> uh, instead of me, because they are better than me. So it's very, very, very important to identify as fast as possible lead user. And uh, the only way to identify lead user is to know that you have some artist and you, who, where, at uh, what moment they start to judge. Very important. Okay? So, when you want to be very creative, it's very simple. First, you don't judge. We say that. You don't judge. I think that everybody now understands, no problem about this. After, you make quantity, a big ID. You need many, 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 many IDs. So, quantity, quantity, quantity. After, originality. Be original. Every people who are very original are welcome. No problem, you can be very original. You can be also crazy. Also crazy people are interesting. And after, you do what we call in English, each hike. Each hike is when somebody propose one ID, another one say, okay, I got another ID. The each hike. It's very, very, very important. Each hike. And when you've got this, uh, the fourth, fourth concept, no judgment, quantity, original, and each hike, then normally you can be very creative with a team, with a group of people. Um, this, no, it's complex, I don't use here. Ah, this side slide is very, 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 very important, is the most important of all my presentations. I told you before that does exist more than 185 techniques about creativity. So many, many techniques and are interesting, original and efficient. But in reality, all use the same mechanism, the same process. And the process is like this. About creativity, you have always a first step which is about 
divergence. You open your mind and you you diverge. You go everywhere. And it's in this part of the ID that you're going to produce, 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 and that you have the quantity. Quantity originality is here. First, you open, you divide. Diversity, diversity, okay? And after, and after that, when you have many, many, many IDs, that you have full of IDs, that you have a big number of IDs, then you take the IDs and you make a selection. And then when you make a selection, you give some specific characteristic to go to the deep, and then you're in the convergence. Then you co go on, you try to go to the objective. So at the beginning you open and you, you go uh, wide and then you go narrow, but in second time. It's very, very, very important. And at the end, you never forget that you want to get the solution, but only in the second part. If you do that in the first part, in divergence, you will never succeed. So first part, divergence, and second, one, second part, convergence. It's very, very important not to make the opposites. If you make the opposites, of course, you kill everything. So first, divergence, and then convergence. If you understand this, and if you memorize this, you can be very good, whatever is the technique. Because in the 185 techniques, in reality, it is just uh, nuances. It is just a different context to adapt to the team but, uh, and to the, the problematic. But it's always the same process, divergence and convergence. OK? This is very, very important. It's the most important about creativity. Um, also, something which is very, very important is the state of mind. Um, you cannot be in a creative way of thinking if you are in a bad mood. This is very important. If uh, everything is bad in your life, and something, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, it does happen, it's impossible to be creative. This is very, very important. And uh, so that's why you need energy. And that's why I told you that this energy can be physical, but also spiritually. If you are very pessimistic, if you are under pressure, if you uh, think that uh, you are a bad person or things like that, you never be creative. It's impossible. And then you can get different uh, attitude to avoid creativity, but it is unconscious. You, you don't realize it but you will get this behavior. The first one is uh, wisdom. You're going to say, okay, reality is like that, we have problem, but we will find solution. It's not, uh, it's like this, I accept this, I do agree with this. Okay, but no creativity with wisdom. So don't be with wisdom. Also, you can be a victim. You can say, okay, oh, I'm not really lucky. I always have problem. Nothing uh, happens good. Uh, everything is bad against me. Against me. Uh, God uh, hate me, uh, something like that. This is also very bad. If you are a victim, you never have creativity. But if, if in front of a problem, because you need a problem to be creative. If in front of a problem, you say, okay, it is opportunity. When I have a problem, it is opportunity to make things differently, to, to have a new paradigm, to, to have a new vision of the world. It's very interesting. I'm going to discover new things. It's, uh, it's uh, very exciting. It's not a problem. You will be creative. So um, Americans say, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. It is exactly the way of thinking that you need to get to be creative. And I, uh, I, I insist about this, this uh, posture, this way of thinking is essential. If you are in a bad way, if you are in a bad mood, if you think that uh, you are not a good person, it, it's impossible for you to be creative. You don't need to be arrogant, huh? just positive, just positive and open mind, minded. Okay? 
um, the work of uh, Sidney Shore. Sidney Shore is uh, very interesting because he creates uh, a technique uh, that uh, helps you to work with uh, stupid people. The, it's very funny because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, angel attorney, it's, uh, I, I have difficulties to, to, to angel lawyer, it's, I have difficulty to translate, it's uh, American, but I, I forgot to, to take the original title. But uh, Sinéchor is very interesting because in reality, when we judge that uh, somebody is stupid, it's a judgment. And uh, we, we have said before, presently, that uh, it's no good to have a judgment. The problem is that when somebody, you, you, you think that somebody is stupid, it will be very, very difficult for you to work with him. So what you can do, because it's more than, uh, it's physically. Physically, when you see the, the person, you stop in your mind. You say, oh my God, warning, this guy is stupid. No, 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 I have to go to another, uh, another room. And so it's important to have some technicals to accept stupidity. The importance is not that you're right or wrong. The important is how to use with your brain to accept the stupidity of other people because it's impossible for you to stop to judge. And then Sidney Shore helped to and proposed a, a technique which works a lot. It's very, very good technique. Um, and he say, firstly, you have to listen to, but total listen. It means that you need a paper and a pen and you're going to write all the words of the stupid person. When he tells you something, you write. You write the word, right? You write everything, word by word. You write everything. When you have finished to write everything what he said, you take the text and you formulate again with your own words what you understand. And you tell him, is it this that you want to explain to me? If the guy say no, okay, you do again. And then it will help you to find a moment where you do agree together. This is very, very important. So first step, you open, completely open and total listen. And the second one, you formulate again what it does explain to be sure that you really understand what you want to explain. When you have done this, you have to, to struggle against, against yourself. You have to to make some compliments and say, okay, I think that in your ideas, this is interesting, this is good, this is, this is very difficult to do because you think that this guy is stupid. But you have to force, you have to, 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 to do that by yourself, you have to struggle against yourself and say, okay, in this guy, there is more than just stupidity. I have to find a positive way in this person. It's very psychologic and essential. And when you have done this third step, you have the fourth step where you, you ask for open question. Open question. Why, who, how much, where, when, all these questions are interesting. It's very, very important to ask this question because you prove that you are interested in the subject and in the way of thinking of this stupid person. So if you do that already in your mind, psychologically, you are doing a change and you realize that now you think that is no more stupid because you ask him many, many questions with why, who, how much, when, all these questions are interesting, okay? And when you have done this, you have the right not to be to, to agree with him. You have completely the right not to agree with him, but you have to find a positive, a positive conclusion. Then you say to himself, okay, I think that about your way of thinking, you should go and see this guy and, and, and speak with him, or you should uh, uh, try to understand, to find a solution for this question. You have to, to finish on a positive attitude. 
This is very, 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 very important. But the most difficult is the first step the, the, with one, two, three, because you have to write the words, you have to formulate again the ID, and also to find positive way. The third step, positive way, is certainly the more difficult when you work with stupid people. And everybody has to struggle against yourself. Because you cannot change the people in front of you. If they are stupid, they will stay stupid. They, don't, they cannot do anything more. So the only way positive that you can do is change yourself, your state of mind. Because also with stupid people, you can create value. It's not because you have a dream team that you're going to get a fantastic idea. You can have fantastic idea with many, many people. So if you are good about creativity, you can work with everybody, also with stupid person. You just need a technique, that's all. Okay? Uh, no, this is very deep. No, you don't need this. Okay. Um, this I'm not going to, to explain to you because it's very specific very technique, you don't need this. Um, no, never for this. Yes. Um, okay, just uh, 15 minutes. Maybe two minutes? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. So I'm going, uh, no, no, Marcel, uh, Marcel right. Uh, is right, Marcel is right. I'm going to, um, the, the rest is, uh, in right I give you the essential. So we can stop here. And if you want to exchange, if you have some question, I stop here. And now I will, uh, I will answer to the question. OK, just one thing. If, you, if nobody is asking any question, two more hours of class. <laughs> OK? <laughs> so ask questions. If you want to go to sleep, especially for <laughs> No, no, there are questions. <laughs> Okay, let's start with Charlie. No, no, um, someone else was trying to talk first. I think Ting Ting, no? Yes. <laughs> you, wanted to, you wanted to ask a question as well, right? Oh, yeah, yes, but uh, the first thing I want to ask is, could, 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 you, could our professor send the, his slide to, to us? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you see that with Marcel? Um, you, you will see that with uh, Marcel. Thank you. Uh, 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 in, in, fact, uh, in fact, we have a lot of questions. So, uh, so maybe, maybe Charlie could start uh, your, your question. And we really have a lot of questions. So we can't. Oh, no, go for it. Go for it. We we can't hear you. Can you be closer to the to the mic, please? Okay. Because the professor just mentioned the difference between Britain and uh, France. Uh, you mentioned uh, because French people judge too much, so leads to more conflict, and uh, British people judge less, and. Uh, the culture is more original. Uh, so, but uh, from this point of view, French people is one of the most creative, creative uh, culture in the world. So, uh, can you explain us more about your understanding of the originality of uh, British culture? That's all. Ting Ting, can you uh, do the question again? Because I don't hear everything. I think that I have understood. But... <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I try to. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Oh, oh. Premier, premièrement, je voudrais euh, connaître euh, la question de Dr. Asintang, donc de l'instant, si ah, okay, okay. je vais répéter. Il 
Okay. Oh, I, I think uh, I, yeah, I try to I, I try to pose this uh, question. Uh, Dr. Anzental asked me uh, uh, because in uh, in um, um, uh, you uh, speak, uh, you talk about uh, uh, the British culture is more creative and uh, uh, original than French culture uh, because uh, the French people do judgments too much, so uh, arise a lot of uh, uh, conflicts. So uh, he he wants to no he wants you to uh, express more your understanding about uh, why british culture has more creativity and original than french culture because it, it, from a, a point of view, the chinese people i think uh, the french culture is the most uh, creative one for the Chinese people, actually, so it's um, um so he wants to know uh, from your point of view why you think uh, the uh, British culture is the most original and uh, uh, creative creative one. Okay, uh, I'm not going to defend my country, huh? So okay. it's just a question: What is the criteria of creativity which is used? Yes. It is true. Uh, Marcel is uh, Marcel is right. Um, it's very difficult. To, I, I just give you my uh, my point of view, but it is also a judgment. Uh, so um, about English people, I think that uh, they are specific, and uh, I've saw, uh, I've seen that in other countries uh, by the fact that uh, firstly it is uh, an uh, island. It is not uh, on the continent. It is island. It's very specific. And uh, also, there is a, a monarchy, and also uh, this is also very, very specific. And uh, they keep uh, um, a link with the past very strong, what French stop with the revolution. And uh, generally, when you make a break in your culture, you, you go faster in, the, in modernity, but in reality, you lose some part of, uh, of all culture. And for me, uh, I don't say that French are less creative than uh, English, and Marcel uh, is right when he said, no, no, it's no good, I don't agree with you, I, I don't understand uh, completely. But I think that French people are very conventional in their creativity. They are in a sort of uh, wounded creativity around uh, fashion, around uh, gastronomy, around uh, things like that. But uh, if you want, for instance, uh, in France, uh, change uh, democracy, it's very difficult. In France, for instance, uh, now we are more and more with uh, local democracy, but it's impossible to say we're going to stop the, the, the conception of uh, republic that does exist in France, because in politics, it's very conservative, very, 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 very. And according to the countries, you have like this, some field where uh, people are very conservative and very open on other, uh, other fields. As I told you about the US, in the US it's very important to get a weapon at home. It's culturally, but uh, there are a lot of death, but they keep it because it's very important for them. It's uh, what uh, we call a myth. A, a myth, comment dire? Myth, myth. Mythology. A mythology. And mythum is essential to build a society. So if you want to understand, to, to give an answer to the question of Marcel, if you want to, to measure the level of creativity of the countries, generally it's very interesting to have a look at the uh, mythum, at the, who are the foundation of the society. And if uh, the society is uh, able to take some distance about the mythum, uh, it's possible that they have a huge creativity potential. If they are always in the same way, it's difficult. For instance, in France, you have seen that the church Notre Dame de Paris was burning. Now it's very, very difficult to know what's going to be the future Notre Dame de Paris. Because Notre Dame de Paris is a mission very important for Paris, for French, for Catholics, 
and for the rest of the world when we want to visit Paris. So about Notre Dame de Paris, French are not creative. They want to be very conservative because it's a mission in the basic of the French culture. So according to the country, it can be very different. But for uh, the, the, the English, for the uh, United Kingdom, the fact being Island and being with monarchy, monarchy that does exist for a very, very long time is very important to understand the, the roots of their creativity. I don't know if I give you um, some answer, if it is okay for your question. And just one thing, Dr. Tang, in terms of patents, there are more patents filed by France than Great Britain, England. So you see, in terms of creativity, a patent can be also a criteria of creativity, so it's difficult. And another thing, when you critique a lot, you are disrupted a lot. Yeah. And you do revolutions. Okay. British never do revolutions. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, but this, this is essential. You're right, you're right, completely right. Okay, Other question? Any question? <laughs> if no one is going, I do have a question. Okay. Can I? We oui, yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, my question was about like connecting and sharing in terms of cultural difference. Um, do you see like? is there are models that have been put in place that help bridge those difference so when we see like you say oh listen without condition always take notes of everything that everyone says but when you have cultural difference how can you bridge those gap in understanding one another mm -hmm. Um, I think that with um, foreign culture is, are, are very, very interesting because uh, generally they, uh, they can uh, show you uh, creativity uh, really uh, surprising. And uh, the problem is that with foreign culture, you don't have the same words. So the representation of the world is by nature completely different from you because uh, you have to adapt to your language. For instance, for me to make this course in English, is very different from the, the, the same course in French. It's very, very, very different. And uh, when you are with uh, foreign culture, um, I think that you cannot uh, uh, put your concentration on the words. So you need to be more concentrated on the attitude, on the, the physically, the way you exchange with people. That's why I'm very uh, frustrated because uh, here I, ju I just have you in front of a camera. You are foreigners, we don't have the same culture, and I cannot see you. And physically, it's very difficult for me to understand you because I, uh, I, I just have words in English. It's not in China, it's not in French. And this creates a huge gap. But when you are with foreigners and when you want to get some creativity with foreigners, it's better to concentrate on the attitude and behavior than on the words. I think that this is uh, very important. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Another question? Michelle, you have any no other questions? You good? That was great. I have another question. Sorry. Is it is it good to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, it's about brain store. 
why do you think it's been established in Switzerland? Do you think like the fact that Swiss people are seen as very like uh, calm and neutral is a type of space, a type of culture that allows for those type of like the idea factory, the fact that it's it's a blank space for people to project and bounce ideas, etc. Or do you think that it's just it happened because the money was there and the space was there? No, 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 no. I'm sorry, I was not uh, enough uh, precise about the uh, brain store. Brain store is just an example. You have uh, the same as the brain store in, uh, in the US, uh, you have uh, in France, in Paris, uh, we have different uh, places oh, okay, like cool. this. And you so have uh, some place one? like this all over the world. The difference is that, uh, that a new place does exist just for 10 years. It's very new. Okay. And um, generally, it's uh, it's uh, original and it's ironic uh, because it's generally where plants does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So they go where where the plant, and they transform these uh, plants. It's very symbolic. We uh, and symbol and myth myth are very close to, and we we will speak about this. I can make a course about this. Uh, I will speak with Marcel. I think that when I, I will go to China, I have something very interesting about this. And uh, this uh, new process is uh, worldwide. It's not just in uh, in Switzerland. Yeah, and, but it was uh, but founded in Switzerland, right? This this specific. No, one. no, 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 no. It uh, it does appear uh, in different places in the world. And um, in Switzerland, it was interesting because. Um, uh, it, it was uh, very original because we, we didn't think that uh, 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 people from Switzerland was very, very interested in creativity. Generally, it's more about finance. And, uh, but in reality, finance is also very, very creative. Eh? Uh, in in finance, people can, can be very, very creative. So it's not uh, so, so strange, but... Uh, in the, we have been surprised uh, when I, I discover a brand store, especially when I discover the, the name of the customers. Because the name of the customers, when you have uh, uh, people like uh, James Cameron, but also Volkswagen, uh, that you have uh, um, uh, organization, international organization like uh, uh, Greenpeace, uh, who go there to get some ideas in, and pay for this. It's uh, in Switzerland. It's it's funny. It's uh, strange. Mm. Okay. Do you have any sure other example of this China, type of place? We have uh, some place like this. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I have uh, not enough uh, knowledge. But certainly in China, you can have uh, that kind of place. So you don't what have other examples. Specific? What is very specific, if you don't have, we can create, because it's very interesting. What is very specific is uh, the fact that you use your, your body. So you, you touch uh, different uh, wall, you, you have different of temperature, you don't eat the same uh, food to have a different uh, conception uh, after. It's, uh, this is very, very interesting. The, the level uh, is very professional and very deep in the biological and psychological uh, knowledge. And this is very, very interesting. Another question? We're good. All good, Antoine, no question. I have the, the question, but not about our courses because I have a lot of questions about this course. I don't think so, I have time to, to ask them all. So the last question, when the professor could come to Shanghai and maybe answer all of our questions. It's already midnight in China, so <laughs> I won't save time. <laughs> It's already planned, uh, Ting Ting. Yeah? Oh, thank you. <laughs> but it's a nice uh, conclusion. Thank you very much. Okay, we can applaud Professor Le Bouge. So guys, if you don't have any other questions, tomorrow at 11 a.m.
for hands-on robotics, 11 a.m. French time, okay? Yes. Maybe at 1.30 p.m. French time, we'll try to have uh, Christophe, uh, the lady that we did not see today. And at 2 p.m., uh, Harvard Business Review Conference on another Zoom. It's not the same Zoom. Really important. Okay. All good? All good. Yes, thank you. Okay. Bye, Antoine. Bye, Innocent. Bye, Bye Charlie. Thank you Thanks, very much. Professor. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.